for good morning. Oh, I got the big boy thing. So grateful to see all of you here today. My name is John Keller. I'm the director of the Church Center for the Day. And as usual, I'm so excited to have all of you here. Welcome, welcome, all welcome, everyone, to the light and love that has gained you at the light. On this beautiful Sunday, we've got a lot of special guests. It's exciting, exciting. Keller, thank you for your love. And as you know, in unity, we begin everything with prayer. Let's take a centering breath and be open to the divine in all of us and listen to this prayer. On this day, we dedicate our hearts to each other. We appreciate each individual spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us. In unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation, we welcome our divine inheritance as it is. We come from love, as love, be loved. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer challenge is contained in the whole sacred space. We pray with you one-on-one. And if there's anything in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see a chaplain following today's service at the front of the sanctuary. And now, please, Stand and join Holly in singing I'll Love for Today. Right at home in this metaphysical form, I'll live for today. I'll live for today, your oh glory. I'll live for today, every morning as I rise. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll live for today. When the shadows of this life are near, I for today. Sweet release from the prison of my fears, I live for today. Here we go. I live for today, oh glory. I live for today, every morning as I rise. Hallelujah, by and by, I live for today. All right, let's take some time and say hello to those people beside us.
it is to see so many people here. And also let us not forget those who are watching us on Zoom and Facebook. Welcome. Now it's time for our Unity Intentions. Please affirm with me Unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And now our Unity of Lawrence vision statement. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And now our Unity of Lawrence mission statement. We are a thriving spiritual community sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. Kelly Hung is a singer, songwriter, recording artist, speaker, and workshop facilitator based in Lawrence, Kansas. She is currently working on her seventh album, and in addition to, in addition, oh, let me try this again. <laughs> and an additional album featuring songs she's written and performed for New Thought Churches throughout the United States both expected to be released in 2022. Welcome, Kelly. It was early in April, so many years ago. I was walking with my father one day. I had tears in my eyes, said I don't understand why you're burning our fields this way. He held my hand and looked down with a smile. And these are the words that he said. Sometimes in spring, even though it looks so green, these old fields need room, you see. For new life to grow, things are not always 
what they say to be. Ten years later, it was so hard when he died, left me burned and charred just like an old smoldering field. I could barely imagine how I'd even go on with my broken heart left to On a gentle warm breeze It started to blow I felt a whispering soft In my ear Sometimes In spring Even though It looks so green these old fields need room, you see, for new life to grow. Things are not always what they seem. It's early in April My little boy Is walking beside me today He's got tears in his eyes And says I just don't understand Why you're burning our fields Away. It's then I realize love never dies. Just like my father, I say. are not always what they Thanks, everybody. Good morning and happy Easter. Here we are. I was thinking about Easter two years ago, and I was asked to do the talk and the service online. And this was, you know, a month or so after we all um, had to go into lockdown. And I thought, uh oh. I had never done those things online before, and it was Easter. I don't know about you, but with my, uh, in my memories of Easter, I was always with family. I was always eating something really, really good. And we had Easter baskets, and we looked for Easter eggs, and it was so much fun, and there's a whole bunch of sugar involved. And, and, here, and here I was two years ago, 
I, I couldn't be with family, at least not in person. Um, I, there was no Easter basket, and that was okay. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fully grown woman. And, uh, and nobody else had made any food for me, so, you know, I'm, by golly, I made it myself. But I thought, oh, I just felt a kind of a, a wave of um, fear and a, and a wave of grief. And I thought, I need to adjust my thinking. And I need to do it pretty quickly because I felt myself doing this. And that's not my MO. That's not how I've lived my life. That really isn't who I am. But I knew, well, if I was feeling that way, then there were probably a whole bunch of people all over the world that were feeling the very same thing. And probably many of them were going through much harder, more challenging things than I was. I was healthy. I was with my husband. I was in a safe place. I had food to eat. I was asked to be part of my home church community, even though it was um, virtually. So that was an honor for me. And I thought, you know, I better get over myself. And one of the things that I've learned through the unity movement ever since I decided to uh, join this path many, many years ago was focus on what you want, not on what you don't want. And so as I thought about Easter, I thought today, look what's happening. Here you all are. Hot dog. This is great. And, and here are all the people online. I'm so glad you're here too. I know what it feels like to be watching something from a distance. I know what it feels like to talk or sing. Holly knows very well. You, what an amazing job she's done with all, during all this time. Well, yes. And it was amazing before the pandemic, but after the pandemic, this woman stepped up. And it's just an interesting thing to see who does what and how can they, how did we learn on the fly? We didn't really have any experience with this. And this takes me to the idea of shining your light as brightly as you possibly can. And not only that, but isn't it interesting what we gravitate to in times of, of stress, in times of fear, in times of grief, in times of isolation? And in times, these last two years, of the absolute unknown. What's going to happen? How long is this going to go on? We don't know. What do we gravitate to? What was that? And in my world, I drew on the mighty power of love. L-O-V-E. And I'm not kidding. If I ever thought that I understood what that power was before, I was drawing on it two years ago like never before in walking the path of the unknown and taking one step at a time, one day at a time. And when I think about the fact that we are all, in my opinion, 100% human and 100% divine, so the human part of me was saying, oh, good Lord, what's going on? What am I going to do? And the divine part of me, which we want to, if we choose to, allow to go through us as us, said, one step at a time. Draw on that power of gratitude. Draw on the power of the mighty power of love. Love, 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 love people all over the world. Join hands. On the love train, the love train. And boy, I was saying all aboard to myself. There's a train. Nobody else is on it right now but me. And I got to, if, if somebody's there, they got to be a whole bunch of ways away from me. I put on my hazmat suit and get on the train and go for the train of love. And when I think about Easter Sunday, you know, there's so much tradition behind this, but when I think about the story that many of us grew up reading in Scripture, in the Bible, in Sunday school, in our various churches, you know, I look at it in a different way now than I did as a child. It kind of scared the bejeebers out of me as a kid. 
I was like, oh, man, how could they do that to this guy who was at that time, he was, a, he was fully human. He wasn't the Christ yet. And yet here he was drawing on the mighty power of love one step at a time. On Palm Sunday, here he came on a little bitty tiny donkey. It's like humbly with peace. He showed up knowing that this guy was going to die at the end of all of that, knowing full well what was coming. Can you imagine? And in metaphysical terms, I look at this as an inspiration to say, yes, I may not know what's coming. I may not know what's coming. And yes, I will go forward one step, one day, one minute at a time, and just claim and say for myself, unlike the way shower and the teacher of Jesus, whose light was so bright, we're still talking about him today. You know? When this guy showed up on the planet, there was a lot of rumbling going on. A lot of people didn't like him. He was a rabbi who said things that were radical and that pushed the buttons of the status quo. And the people started to get excited and say, well, here comes our brand new king. Come on in. And the people in charge said, oh, no, you don't. As a matter of fact, we're going to make it really, really hard for you. As a matter of fact, we don't want you on the planet. And to imagine that kind of circumstance compared to what we live through in our life today. And then to imagine the excitement of what happened after his body had given up the ghost, so to speak, and the Holy Ghost came in, using terms that I grew up hearing. And then stepping out of a tomb. And who was waiting for him? Women had stood vigil. Women were there. They didn't give up. They didn't leave when he went in the tomb. They, they prayed. They stayed there, not knowing what was going to happen. There were no Easter baskets then. There were no Easter eggs. There was no Easter bunny. You know, and this was the beginning of what we ended up embracing now. Symbols of new life. Symbols of joy, symbols of family, symbols of eternity and the infinity of the divine, which I fully embrace. I love seeing bunny ears here today. It reminds me of my history. It reminds me of joy. It reminds me of new life. And there's a possibility here for us if we choose it. So I go back to the song that I sang for you just a few minutes ago. Sometimes in spring, even though it looks so green, these old fields need room, you see, for new life to grow. And things are not always what they seem to be. And what better example of that than Easter Sunday? In gatherings all over the world, people are saying, Hallelujah, Hosanna. Let's do it. You know, they're happy. This is a day to rejoice, to say, you know what? This is possible for me. This is possible for me to not only understand that the divinity lives where? Right here inside of me, but I can access it if I choose. I want you to think about who in your life inspires you, whose light is so bright that you can't help but just be washed in that beautiful energy. When I say light, sometimes it's a physical light, and some people do see you know, the aura. Think of the halos that are illustrated uh, in the Bible and different texts. That's light, and I see that in my life as energy. There's energy when you walk in a room. There's energy when you see people who love you. There's an energy in the grief of having to say goodbye or what you think is goodbye, which is what Jesus' followers had to do, and there were a lot of them. And they walked through that path of grief, not knowing that soon they would be celebrating his life and talking about the way that he showed for so many people. And there are Many, many teachers in many, many different faiths. Buddha, Krishna. 
we think of so many names. Paramahansa Yogananda has a book, uh, wrote a book that I read about um, the, it's not the, the same title, but it's like The Return of the Christ. And all the teachings are so similar that they feel like they're the same. They're in different languages. These human beings showed up on the planet at different times in different locales to say, guess what? It's possible. I'm here to model this for you. And I believe there's a scripture, and I'll paraphrase it, that says something like, you know, what I'm doing here, you can do even more. Whoa. It would have been, it would have been a big old shock to me had I been alive during the time of Jesus when he went into the tomb after witnessing a brutal and, and very uh, sad death and then see this guy come out with a big old stone go away and, and bam, there he is. I would question my sanity. And once I realized that, yes, in fact, he, this had happened and the teachings morphed into, and you have this possibility when you accept and take on the divinity that's already inside of you. It's right there. So when we look at, as a metaphor in Kansas, when we look at, and we just saw this a couple weeks ago, out in the area where I grew up, lots of burning fields. And it's really quite a sight at night. Have you ever seen those fields at night? When it's dark and you see big strips of orange, and the fields are burning, and they're being tended, and most of the time, they're well planned for. And for the for the the men and women who farm and take care of this land, who are good stewards of this land, plan these control burns. They know what they're doing, and they're not going to let it get out of hand and destroy buildings and people and animals. They know what they're doing. So all of us get to witness this amazing thing that happens. People who aren't from this area, sometimes it can be frightening to see. What's that? All that smoke. All those, all those flames. These fields are going up in smoke. And there's that feeling of disbelief and feeling of fear. What are these guys and gals doing? And what they're doing is being good stewards of the land. They are making way for new life. And in their own way, they are rolling back the stone. They are both taking life and opening the door to give life. Easter is a day of renewal. It's our resurrection day. We get to choose. Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, noted that Easter Day, quote, is the awakening and raising to spiritual consciousness of every individual. Everybody's included if you choose to be. I'm a fan of writer Eric Butterworth, and he says, Easter's not a passport to another world. It's a quality of perception for this one. Right now, right here, what's relevant to us? What's Easter have to do with us today? It's not just a day when we, when we recall how Jesus rose from the dead. It's a time to take a new look at ourselves and contemplate the divinity in us, the depths of our own innate God potential. It is a time to reappraise the principle that makes all overcoming possible. And this includes death. And that's what Jesus showed us there. In his, as a human being in his life, yes, his body was done. He died. And when he, you know, he came out of that tomb, it was an example of What's possible for overcoming anything? An inspiration to us. So when we feel like everything around us is dark and we're afraid and we don't know what the heck's going to go on, we have the choice to look again. And we have the choice to be the light. 
That's a responsibility for our own lives. We can be miserable and say, it's dark, I'm scared, I don't know. And there is real, I'm not invalidating grief. I've lived a lot of grief in my life. But during those times, I decided I need to feel everything I need to feel. Like the women who were there to tend to Jesus' body, who were there to be outside of the tomb and hold vigil like those women. They did not deny. They did not keep themselves from wailing and crying. And yet they stayed. And yet they stayed, you guys. So the story of Easter can be a metaphor for coming out of the dark. Come on out of there. And it's a choice. It's the triumph of life over death, the spiritual over the physical, hope over despair. We celebrate the power of love that was shown by a really great, amazing teacher through resurrection. And we recognize the Christ consciousness in each of us. And that's one of my favorite things about the unity movement. It includes everybody. It doesn't say, yeah, well, there's a Christ consciousness, but you don't get to access to it. It says, everybody here. And as human beings, speaking only for myself, who's very, very human many, many times, I say, well, why do, you know, I, that person doesn't deserve any of that. And my divine self says it includes everybody. There are days when it's easier to be a human than others. But we always have access to the, vine, to the divine. We just need to make the choice. I love this quote that says, I stopped looking for the light and decided to become it instead. I decided to become it. Who in this room has been inspired by somebody who they know is a walking example of the, one of the brightest lights they've ever seen. Have you ever met somebody like that? I know I have. And guess what? A bunch of you are right here in this room. I would venture to say all of you are examples of that. All of you. Things are not always what they seem to be. Struggling souls catch the light from other souls who are fully lit and willing to show it have you ever been told well you're too much you need to simmer down that's a little too light you got this going on i certainly have and isn't it isn't it a relief when somebody sees you and gets you and says oh nothing's too much in fact, I can feel your light so much, it's filling me with energy. It's inspiring me to do the same. When I was a little girl and I started uh, playing piano by ear, when I was three, I was really drawn to this old beat-up piano. I couldn't keep my hands off of it. And I was so excited about it. And every day, every day, I would just have my hands on that thing. And I couldn't see worth a dang. I was very, very nearsighted. Nobody knew for another three years. But it was perfect because I couldn't see, so I could just feel it and hear it. It was kind of great. And I, would, I found at that time, by the time I was in kindergarten, I found myself expressing my joy, my happiness, my tears, whatever that might be, through my hands on those keys. I'd come home like, I love my teacher. Yeah, just as loud as I could, you know. And I was like, ah. oh, and then, you know, oh, my kitty died. And, oh, my God. and I was just a little bitty kid. But here's a, a thing that happened. When you're not self-conscious about that light that's coming through you, and it's for all of us, a lot of stuff comes out. And if you're surrounded by people who recognize it and support it and say, all right, bring it on. And don't laugh at, at what yours is here to do. They don't, I wasn't ridiculed for coming home and expressing my emotions in that way. I was encouraged. I do remember one instance when I was pretty robust and I was playing just pretty hard, singing at the top of my lungs. And the only thing that was ever said to me that might suggest that I could, you know, calibrate that a little bit 
was my dad said, oh, Kelly, that sounds great. Have you ever thought of exploring the idea of quiet songs, too? <laughs> and what that didn't do was dampen my spirit. I went, oh, yeah, so. Da, da, da. <laughs> and my dad said, gosh, look at all these choices you have. I say that to remind myself we can speak life into ourselves and we can speak life to each other and that's how we can help somebody start their own resurrection from feeling like all is lost like I can't go on I'm too scared I don't know what to do. I don't know how to go forward. It's not worth it. Sometimes we need somebody else to come in there and start that fire. Not a destructive one that says, you're playing too loud. You need to simmer down there, little girl. But brings a light to it and just sets it by me and says, hey, that sounded great. Did you know you can also play this other way too? Look at all these choices you have. He spoke life into me. And here I am a bazillion years later, still remembering that, still living that, and still knowing that he spoke life into me at a time when it could have been the other way. It could have been a pivotal point that told me, oh, I'm not going to go forward and keep playing this piano. I'm not going to write any more songs about what's going on. It's not safe. It's not good. I'm too much. I'm too loud. I'm too quiet. I'm too, 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 too. Instead, life was spoken to me. Spirit supports us at all times. So if you don't have somebody around you speaking life into you, Hook in any way you can into the mighty power of love, whether it's reading, whether it's watching others, whether it's asking for help, asking for help. There is one presence and one power inside of all of us, whether it shows up in human form all the time around us or not. And we're it, you guys. We're it. I stopped a long time ago looking, you know, for that kind of healing and that kind of inspiration and those words of life from other people. I, there was a time in my life when I desperately needed that, and I was thinking it was going to come from the outside. And guess what? It's an inside job. And one of the, one of the times that lifted me up the most was becoming very aware and more aware of the unity movement. And I know that... Th Different things work for different people, but this is what worked for me. And I let go of the grief that I carried when I realized I was carrying it. I was carrying the grief of saying, ah, I can't go to church anymore. I was carrying the grief of, oh, I've been hurt by that. I was carrying the grief of not being able to be involved in the ritual and the community and the upliftment and the prayer and what are, how I wanted to express musically. It wasn't appropriate in, in a lot of places. And that felt bad to me because I knew even as a little kid, and I bet you did too, there's something that I'm attracted to and drawn to that I know is okay and it's healthy. And I don't need to condemn or judge anybody else, especially myself. Oh, man, what a relief that was to get those principles, not just to read them, but to start folding them in. So today we celebrate the life and teachings of Jesus. And this may rub some folks the wrong way, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Jesus is not a dirty word, okay? He is, and, and sometimes the... The presence of him in our lives has been hurtful to a bunch of us. And there are people, when they hear that name, they're like, get that name. I don't want to hear that. No, thank you. And I understand that because in many ways I lived that before. But when I think of Easter today, I think Jesus is a really great teacher who has shown the way for us to remember what? Who we are. This guy 
died. He suffered. He was tortured. And he was ridiculed and humiliated. And what was he doing up on that cross while this was happening? He was giving blessings to the other two guys on the crosses next to him. He was ministering to them while he was in pain. So, gosh, I'm okay with somebody who takes that bright light approach. And I never tell anybody how to live their life or who to, what teachers to follow. I just know that he's been an inspiration to me to this day. And I'm okay with that now. I didn't used to be okay with that. And it's fine if you're not. It's not mine to tell you what to do. I love what he said, or whichever man wrote this in the Bible. And I don't know if it's word for word. It's probably not. But the essence of one of the things Jesus said is, when you see me, you see the presence that sent me. And that presence lives in each and every one of you. So we are all walking each other home. And I feel like when I think about Easter, this is just for me, the image of him stepping out of the tomb and going on that path helped us say, I'd like to walk that path. What is that? You mean I can be part of this consciousness too? You mean, oh, whoop, it's already inside of me? I get to choose whether I want to access that or not? We are walking each other home, shining the light as brightly as we can for others and for ourselves. There's a song uh, in, that called Good Companions that my friend Jim Ritchie wrote with B.J. Fleming. And I, my husband... Al and I, who, of course, you all know I like to call my boyfriend. We've been together. We've been married for 25 years. And we like this song so much that we had it sung at our wedding that says, Good companions trust each other even when they're lost at night. One companion reads the compass while the other holds the light. So as we prepare to go into meditation, I just want to say, you are the light. Speak life to yourself. Speak life to each other. Hold the compass. Hold the light. Roll that stone away. So I want you to get comfortable in your chair and those online, wherever you are. Know that you are certainly not alone. We are with you in spirit and consciousness as we speak. And let's take a deep breath together as we relax our shoulders and our backs. And take another deep breath. Things are not always what they seem. We are all walking We are all walking We are all just walking each other home So we remember that not only does the light burn brightly in the consciousness of others, but also in ourselves. And we are grateful for the teachers who are present in our lives, who are the way showers to show examples of how we can be the light ourselves.
remember to reach for others on this path and others who seemingly cannot find their way to the path. And we reach for them with our thoughts, with our hands, with the Christ consciousness that lives and is vibrant and alive in each of us. We are all walking. We are all just walking each other home. We take another deep breath. Slowly and gently, we come back into this room or wherever we are at this moment. And we breathe again. And we are thankful for this beautiful Easter day to be together and to remember we too are the light. Here we are. Oh my gosh. How about another a round of applause? As our ushers come forward, here's our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth. You know what? As a human being, I just made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
let's try something. Let's start all over. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly Hunt. Yay! Yay! As our ushers come forward for our time of thanks, I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. As the love offering is collected, let's join Holly in singing, I am alive with the Spirit of God. 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 I am alive, alive with the Spirit of God. Spirit of God, I am alive with the Spirit of God. I am alive with the Spirit of God. I am alive with the Spirit of God. I am alive, alive with the Spirit of God. I am alive, alive with the Spirit of God. You may have heard this before. <laughs> As our ushers come forward, here's our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And now it's time for opportunities. First of all, a spe special welcome to our guests today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like more information about the Unity Movement and Unity of Lawrence, pick up a welcome packet in the lobby. The Lunch Bunch is meeting at Jade Garden, 1410 Castle Drive. All are welcome. Our weekly meditation group meets on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Everyone is welcome. Also, starting this next week, Phil is offering an online meditation groups on Mondays and Tuesdays. More information in the foyer. Phil, did you want to come up and say something, or is that enough? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a flyer out in the morning, and then we have uh, two groups uh, that people are offering. They're part of our open meditation group. Uh, they're going to start looking at Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Come early and join us Sunday mornings for a time of fellowship at 10.30 a.m. downstairs. Enjoy some fresh brewed coffee and treats with your Unity community. And now I would like to ask Kathy Pryor and Aaron McCall to come to the stage. Hello? Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this on? Yes, it is. Thank you all. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Catherine Pryor, and I'm the president of the board for Unity of Lawrence, and we are thrilled today to have Aaron with us. For those of you who don't know, Aaron has worked with for us at Unity for a long time. How old were you when you started? Uh, I don't know. Young. She was young. She's grown up here, and we've been so blessed to have her presence. She has been working in our AV area for a very long time, and she is now moving on to greater things. You have a full-time job now, right? I do, yes. Uh, I'm working at, at Copy Co. Copy, Copy Co. Wonderful, Copy Co. So let's please give a great round of applause, and we are going to bless this young woman because she is 
pretty darn terrific. My hands together. Aaron, we love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we see the divinity in you. We are meeting on Saturdays in April from 9 a.m. to noon to work in the gardens. We will be joined on April 23rd by KU students participating in the KU Big Event. They will help us spread and mulch and continue the work on the gardens. Looking forward to seeing you then. Please join us next Sunday when Karen Langsford brings us the message, Understanding the Humble Power, Special Music with Sugarfoot Detour. And now it's time to sing in our youth. Let's stand together. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You are walking in the light, in the light, in the light. You are walking in the light, in the light of God. In the light, in the light, in the light, in the light. In the light, in the light, in the light of God. You are walking as the light. Send them lo their love as we pray for them. Because our vision is a, is because our vision is celebrating a peace and abundant world for all, let us all join and sing the original peace song. 